Game Corner. Oh, hey there, YouTube. I'm back here today for another game review. And today, I'm very excited to check out Expo 1906 from Gotha Games. This is for one to four players, ages 14 plus. It'll take about 60 to 90 minutes to play. And in Expo 1906, there is a big uh, science fair pretty much that is coming up with steam and electric powered inventions and you're going to be building these inventions and trying to get money from big fat cats and skyscrapers and writing journals about your newfound inventions and in the end trying to get the most victory points uh, so we're going to be talking about how this game is played so let's go ahead open it up and check it out Alright then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Expo 1906. First and foremost, we've got our handy dandy rule book. It's 11 pages, double sided, full color, full pictures, illustrations, examples. It's very well done. It should have you up and running uh, relatively quickly. There's quite a good deal going on, different ways to score, but still, well done rule booklet. So in Expo 1906, you are going to be starting with this decrepit lab right here. And what you're hoping to do is build various different inventions over here to score victory points. Also write different journals over here about different topics, which will score you victory points uh, throughout the game. And also potentially give you these victory point chips that will get you more points at the end of the game. You have to be monitoring your money over here by going to the various different skyscrapers and talking to bidwigs. You're going to go to train stations to purchase different components that will uh, do, you know, which will help you build the various different things over here. And you might even go to the Academy, which will uh, give you these different guys you can put on your board, which will give you permanent awesome bonuses. So there's quite a good deal going on. We're going to talk about the components, then we'll get into the gameplay, because the gameplay itself is actually relatively simple. So we got our board right here. We went over pretty much everything we need to go. Uh, you're going to be journaling over here. You keep track of your money over here. Victory points down on the bottom. Train station, very simple right here. This is where you're going to be purchasing uh, various different components, which will eventually go on your board. We have the jury up here, and the jury is either going to decide if they like electric items better or if they like steam-powered items better, because this is like a big contest. And at the end of the game, uh, there's like this little uh, uh, tug-of-war going on here. At the end of the game, whichever one is winning is going to score extra victory points for the inventions that match that. So if you have, say, two electricity down here and up here electricity wins at the end of the game, you're going to get extra bonus points, which is awesome. Last but not least, we have the Academy over here, which we, you can spend your skyscraper money to purchase these different inventions or these different Academy upgrades. So let's go over the ebb and flow of the game. So on your turn, it's a very simple game at its core because you're only going to be taking one and only one action. So we'll go over the different actions you'll be able to do because you're going to have these action cards right here. You will have six different action cards that you can take. So let's go over them. So the first one is going to be the journal phase. So the journal phase is very simple. If you play the journal card, you'll be able to move your tokens three spaces. So you can move all three of them one space. You can move one of them two spaces and one of them one space. Or you can just move something three spaces. Now, what is the benefit to moving these? Um, well, because if you complete an invention and you are leading this track on whatever component it is, and that is happens to be on the invention. So let's take a look. Let's just invent, say you invent the bulb and you were in first place on the gear and first place on the, uh, the book, then you would gain two additional bonus points. So instead of just getting the two victory points for cleaning the bulb, you would actually get four victory points. So the journal is pretty important on that aspect. Also, if you're in this brown spot over here at the end of the game, you will get one victory point. So if you had this and the game was over, that'd be worth one extra victory point. And if you were the first person to win the race to get all the way over here, then you get one of these end of the game scoring tokens, which can be very valuable. So each scrap slot uh, used is going to get you victory points. So right now that would be five victory points, but obviously most of the time you're going to move slash get rid of these scraps. Uh, this one is just worth each $2 is worth a victory point. Uh, this one, each eight victory points is worth one victory point, so on and so forth. So there'll be different ways, different uh, strategies that you can potentially focus on with those. I'd like to see more of those in a future expansion, though, because those are really can change the game. So that is what you're going to do on the journal phase. Next, we have the academy phase, another very simple one. And all the ones are actually very simple. This one, you're going to spend $2, and you can either purchase one of these inventions down here and place it in front of you right over here in this spot right here, or you can purchase one of these academy upgrades. And I'll show you a couple of the academy upgrades because they are very, very cool. So this one, you put it on your board, and it's always, if anything touching this, is just going to have two of the center blocks, two of the poles. This one will actually give you a new card, which I'll show you a little bit. 
Uh, this one, very similar. So as you can see, some of them are very similar. The cool ones are actually the card ones. So I'll show you how the card ones work right here. So if you purchase the card one, the improved something or other, and you put it onto your board, you immediately get to take one of these cards. And these cards will replace your original card. So let's take a look at the old Academy as opposed to the new Academy. The old Academy, you just purchase something for two. You still get to do that with this one, but you also get to take a free train tile right here, which is how you're going to build inventions. Skyscraper, instead of getting four bucks, you'll get six bucks. The journal, you'll get to move four things and it's a little bit cheaper uh, to do stuff. So. Very cool when you can get one of those improved cards right there. So that is going to be the Academy action. The next action you can take is the train station. And how this works is uh, you're going to need to purchase materials to build your inventions over here that you're going to put on your board. So you can purchase them from the train station. The first one you can purchase is going to cost you one coin. The second one's going to cost you two coins. The third one's going to cost you three coins. If you only want one thing, it's cheap. But if you start buying numerous things, it's going to be very expensive. And the, there is a finite amount of these per round. So if someone comes out and buys three of them and someone else comes out and buys three of them, you can't buy anything. They won't get replaced until the next round. So we did the train station, we did the journal, skyscraper, very simple. You play this card, you're going to gain money on the track right here. And you can never go over 12 bucks, so you do want to be uh, monitoring your money, even though I really don't see too many scenarios where you're going to go over 12 bucks. Next, we have the laboratory. This is a very important one as well because it's going to allow you to take these tiles that you have purchased over here and put them onto your board. So this will allow you to do three tiles, either taking them off or putting them on or a combination of both or just moving things around. So when you first start the game and you played this, you would obviously, you'd want to go one, two, three, get this scrap off of your board or potentially just move it if maybe you had plans to get that victory point one that gave you uh, the victory points for scraps. But that would be very early to plan that move but anywho laboratory is going to let you put things onto your board or take them off or move them around because once you put them in place you can't move them unless you do the laboratory or there's one other special circumstance that you can do that and i'll talk about that right now now the final action you can take is the meeting room card and how this works is you'll take an action then your opponent will take an action then the next person will take an action you're just going to keep going clockwise in a circle until uh until someone plays what's called the meeting room now, one thing I do want to mention is when you're doing this, you can't play the card your previous, uh, the previous player played. So if, if I played the laboratory, the person next to me could not play the laboratory, so on and so forth. Well, what's eventually going to happen is after the first round, someone can play what's called the meeting room. The meeting room will end this round, and they get to do two actions. So they can move one up on the journal track. They can uh, reorganize a little bit on their board, one different tile. They can uh, take a dollar or they can do what's called the jury action, which is where they get to pick whether or not electricity or steam goes on top up here, which, as we mentioned, can get you victory points at the end of the game. So, for instance, if you're building, say, three electric things, it's in your best interest to make sure that electric ends up winning the jury at the end of the game. So what's going to happen is eventually someone will play the meeting room. At that point, everyone will pick back up their cards. You will end the round by clearing out the train station. So you'll take all these out and you'll get new stuff on the train station. You will see what the last tile was placed. So let's just say it was electricity. And how this works is uh, everything that is not electricity over here is going to go away and get replenished with a new one. So if you do the meeting room, you can potentially swing what's going to be out here in the buy area. Uh, you'll replace anything that has gotten purchased over here, so you will have a full board each time. And then you will rinse, wash, and repeat with the next player, going whoever did the meeting room. Uh, that player after them will then proceed to play a card, and you will go until either everyone is on these spots over here, so all of these slots are filled up over here, or until you have gone through all the rounds of the game. When you get to the game end, you're going to total up the victory points that you have earned on these tokens on going on here on the journal. You'll also get victory points for um, the jury, so whoever is uh, whichever either steam or electricity is the most popular, if you have those inventions, they will give you two extra victory points. And then whoever has the most victory points will be the winner of the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how Expo 1906 is played. Alrighty then, Expo 1906 from Gotha Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game is not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. One to four players is a very restricted player count, which is unfortunate if you play with more players. 
Also, I wish there were more special condition victory point chips that you get from completing, uh, getting to 10 on the journal track. Because there is exactly six of them, so you're going to use them each and every game. I, I wish they were a little bit more diverse. I feel like that would open the game up, giving you some new strategies, some new things you could try out. Hopefully a future expansion will fix that. Also, likewise, with the Academy Tiles, I wish there were some more interesting, intriguing Academy Tiles. Now, not to say they're not interesting, intriguing, but I just want a couple more. But that's, you know, actually kind of a pro, because I'm going to tell you, I really like this game. Um, other cons I have with the game... It looks like it's more complex than it actually is. Some people are going to be turned off. They're going to think this is a really meaty, chunky game, and it's not. It's actually a very simple game. It has like the Twilight Imperium-esque vibe where it looks very complex, but in actuality, on your turn, you're only going to be doing one action, which for some people like me, I enjoy that, but some people will be a little bit turned off by that. Any other cons I have with the game, oh, solo game-wise, for those of you interested in how the solo game plays, I do want to mention that it's not my particular type of solo game that I would play over and over again, like your Lord of the Rings LCG or your Mage Knight or something. Reach game is going to be a little bit different. This one is really for solo gamers who like to see if they can maximize how many points they get, because the gameplay itself is going to be very samey each time you play. But with that being said, if you are one of those solo gamers who likes to see about getting a high score, I think you are going to enjoy this one. I know I did, I did enjoy it, uh, but once I reached the 30-point threshold, I was like, yeah, I'm probably never going to play this solo again. I, I completed what was set out in front of me, and I'll go play some other solo games. But moving on to the pros, Expo 1906 is a really, really solid, great game. And I'll put it this simple. If you routinely play with less than four players, I can absolutely recommend Expo 1906. So what I like about this game, there's a lot of stuff to like about this game. First and foremost, graphic design-wise, the board is very clean. It's very simple and user-friendly. The rule booklet, likewise, simple and user-friendly. The rule booklet is well done. It plays well solo, especially if you like to compete for higher scores. Um, one thing that I liked about this game, and this is, can be a con for some people, is you never can do as much as you want to do, which really frustrates some people. My wife in particular, she hates that. She wants to be able to do what she wants to do. And in this game, you're never able to do as much as you want to do because getting these inventions is actually incredibly difficult to do because, you know, maybe the, the piece you need isn't in the train station. If it is in the train station, then maybe somebody buys it and you're like, oh, I don't hate that. And then maybe there's an invention out there that you want to purchase. But then during the jury phase, you know, maybe steam comes up and it's an electric invention, which means it goes off the board. Then you're like, oh, crap. And then you have to be worried about the journal. It's a very, it's, it's a balancing act. And I really liked that aspect of the game. Uh, it played well at one, two, three, four. It played well at all the player counts. I liked it best at four because it was really just walking a tightrope with, with resources in the academy. Uh, but I liked it really well at all the different player counts. Um, it looks good. It plays good. It's tight. It's easy to teach. That's one thing. Uh, easy to learn. You know, yeah, I'd say it's relatively easy to learn. You sit down with the rule books, you can probably figure it out. I will say this is probably one of those games where you want to learn how to play it before you teach other people. But with that being said, once you know how to play, it's incredibly easy to teach. So just overall, Expo 1906 is an incredibly solid game that I absolutely can recommend if you play with less than four players routinely or if you play solo if you like trying to maximize your high score. So that is Expo 1906 from Gotha Games, one that I definitely can recommend. I can't wait to see an expansion for this game. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know if you could take credit for one invention throughout human history, what would that invention be? Ooh, that's a really tricky one. For me personally, I think it would have to be Let's see, I don't want to die poor, so this would have to be something that would immediately make me rich so I could retire. So I think I would go with the two, ooh, ooh. I think I would go with the TV, because you would immediately just get just crazy, crazy rich. You would have, you have the, the highest end TV, so I think I would do the TV. Plus, you'd go down to history, because, you know, TVs are in everybody's houses, so I would do the TV. But let me know in the comments below what invention would you like to take credit for and why. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.